Thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of the White Rogue of Siam. My wife Harriet and I once made an expedition to the Far East, to Siam, a land of pagodas and smiling people. It was in this strange country that I heard about one of the rarest of all animals. We'd stopped at the village of Lampong, up country from Bangkok, and happened to wander into the Siamese version of a general store. They seem to have most everything here you'd see in a store back home, Clyde. I've noticed that. I'll bet they've even got my brand of shaving cream. <laughs> Hurry about it now. Oh, look. That man back there talking to the shopkeeper. He's English, isn't he? Yeah, probably from some plantation or... See other. here, Cresha. Uh, get those things put up quickly, will you? I want to leave in an hour or so. Yes, sir. Mind you, don't forget the tobacco. No, sir. Could, uh, could somebody help us here? Well, hello there. I, I didn't see you folks come in. Uh, the shopkeeper's just uh, finishing my order. All right. Uh, Americans, aren't you? Why, yes, we are. I thought so. Uh, welcome to Lampong. Davis is my name. Beatty's mine, and this is Mrs. Beatty. A pleasure, I'm sure. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Do you live in Lampong? Good heavens, no. I, I just come in once a month for supplies. Have a teak plantation up near Chiang Mai. It seems there are quite a number of those around here. Uh, too many, if you ask me. Uh, you say your name is uh, Beatty? That's right. Beatty. Beatty has a familiar ring. By Jove, you're not the circus man, wild animal trainer, and all that sort of thing, are you? <laughs> the same. Oh, well, that explains it. Uh, looking for animals, eh? Yes, we hope to get a few elephants, at least. Would you like a, a really unusual elephant, Beatty? Why, yes, but one's pretty much like another, isn't it? No, not the one I'm thinking of. You see, uh, this one is white. Really? Well, where is it? Uh, is it for sale? How, how can I... <laughs> steady, steady, Beatty. Uh, perhaps I'd better explain. Please do, Mr. Davis. Well, uh, this white elephant is up on Sutherland's plantation. It's also up near Chiang Mai, about 50 miles from here. It belongs to Sutherland's foreman, Leeds, if I'm not mistaken. But whether or not it's for sale, I don't know. Brother, one of the rarest animals in the world, a real sure enough white elephant, it's got to be for sale. Oh, what a prize to take back with us to the States. Well, uh, there might be a problem, Beatty. But perhaps you'd, uh, you'd better talk to the man who owns it. It's fine. I'm going by the Sutherland place tonight. If you like, I'll stop in and uh, tell them to be expecting you tomorrow. <laughs> Now, back to Clyde Beatty and the White Rogue of Siam. The Englishman Davis is keeping his promise to the Beatties to arrange a meeting with the owner of a white elephant. Davis arrives at the Sutherland Plantation, and after considerable pounding on the door, succeeds in arousing the foreman who owns the elephant, Leeds. Well, well, Davis, old man, come on in. How are you, Leeds? Here, here, let me pour you a drink. Thank you, no. Uh, where's Sutherland? He's gone into Chiang Mai. He won't be back until tomorrow afternoon sometime. I see. How's everything going? Oh, as usual. I hate this place more every day. Leeds, why don't you settle down? Cut out this... No, now, don't you. start preaching to me, Davis. I, I know I'm about to be set, but I don't care. If I'd had me money, I'd have gotten out of this year long before this. I'm sorry, I only... Ah, forget it, forget it. Is that all you stopped by for? Uh, no, no, I stopped by to tell you that you'll have visitors tomorrow. An American couple named Beatty. I ran into them uh, in Lampong this afternoon. Visitors? Americans? Well, what do they want up here? Well, Beatty's a circus man from the States. I told him about that white elephant you've got. He'd like to talk with you about buying it. <laughs> That's a good one. I'd just love to see that white rogue perform in a circus. Didn't you tell him nobody could handle her except in a house? No, I didn't tell him anything. I thought it better for Beatty to get all the facts from you. You uh, didn't tell him anything? Mm, just that the animal belonged to you. I see. Of course, they might be able to hire them a house to go along with the elephant. I suppose they could arrange to take them both back to America. Ahmet wouldn't leave this country. And he wouldn't approve of my selling to crew either. Well, I guess the Beatty's trip will be for nothing, then. I say, uh, their trip will be for nothing. Huh? 
Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm afraid so. Too bad. Well, I must be going. Give Sutherland my best when he gets back, will you? And tell the Beatties I'm sorry if I led them on a wild goose chase. Yes, I'll tell them. Uh, any idea when they'll arrive? Oh, morning sometime, I should imagine. Uh, treat them well, Leeds. They seem like a good sort now. Don't you worry. I'll treat them right. Ahmed! Ahmed! Come here. Good morning, Leeds, sir. You wish to speak with Amit? Why else would I call you over here, fool? Yes, sir. You told me the other day you wanted to go into the village. I've decided to let you go this morning. But I not understand, sir. Am I not to work today? No. You may go to the village. You needn't be back until tomorrow. Oh, thank you, sir. For crew and I will leave at once. Now, wait a minute. You're not to take the elephant. Not take the crew? But Sub always... Don't be... argue. It's a new rule. You can walk. Very well, Sub. I go. Oh, this is the place, Clark. I guess so. I never thought this old crate would make it. Look at her boy. Well... We could have come by Oxcart, of course. <laughs> on this superhighway of Siam, it might have been better at that. Come on, Harriet. We're getting closer to our prize. Oh, I can't wait to see it. We can put it in the center ring. And don't you think a bright red howdah would be striking? <laughs> well, good morning. You must be the Beatty. Yes, we are, Mr. Sutherland. Uh, I'm Leeds, uh, Sutherland's foreman. Mr. Sutherland won't be back until late this afternoon. Well, you're the man we want to see anyway. Fine, fine. Come in, won't you? I guess uh, Mr. Davis stopped in and told you we were coming, huh? Yes, he did. Uh, please sit down. Uh, Davis said you were interested in my white elephant. We certainly are. Interested is hardly an adequate word, Mr. Lee. <laughs> well, you, you caught me at an opportune moment, I must confess. Any other time, I, I wouldn't think of selling talk crew. But there's a piece of land up country that I'm interested in buying, so I might listen to an offer for her. Oh, then it is a female. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. that's good. We found a male elephant too difficult to handle. I dare say a white elephant should prove to be quite an attraction in America. Why, it'd be a sensation. Mr. Leeds, you've no idea what it would mean if you were to sell her to us. <laughs> oh, I have a faint idea, I think. Well, could we see her right away? Of course. Uh, let's get down to the compound. All right. Ah, oh, so that's to crew. Right. What do you think of it? Well, she's wonderful. She's bigger than most of the others, isn't she? Yes, she's good-sized and still growing, I think. Uh, let's go up closer. I want to get a good... Uh, no, I wouldn't go closer just now, Beatty. She's, uh, well, she's not used to you, you know. Of course, once she gets to know you, she's as gentle as a kitten. I see. Uh, does she have one special mahout? Oh, yes. Um, it's gone for the day, though. Poor fella's brother passed away yesterday. Oh, that's a shame. Yes, yes, yes. He'll be back tomorrow and put the crew through her paces for you. And, of course, uh, he'll accompany her on the trip to Bangkok when you're ready to ship her. Well, that's fine. Why is she chained over there, away from the others? Oh, uh, uh, the natives think she's something special. Oh. Yeah, they don't think she should mingle with the common herd. Well, Leeds, I'm ready to talk business. Fine. Uh, suppose we go back to the house and have a spot of tea while we do it. And I'll have your things brought in. Uh, we have a nice room in the house for you. I think 5000 is fair, Leeds. It's a deal. I know she's probably worth much more than that, but, uh, well, I'm not one to squeeze the last penny from a man. We appreciate that, and I'll be glad to get this cash off my hands. <laughs> As you can see, we came prepared for a quick transaction. <laughs> and that adds some influence on the price, you can be sure. Mm. There you are. Yeah. I think you'll find that's right. It seems too good to be true, Clyde. It's true enough, honey. We are now the proud owners of a genuine Siamese white elephant. Hurry, <laughs> hurry, hurry. Oh, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> Practicing. Well, what say we go rest and maybe write some letters, honey? Wait till some of the gang back home hear what we've got. After the drive up here, that rest part sounds good to me. I guess there isn't much we can do until Tokuru's Mahout comes back tomorrow. That's right, Mrs. Beatty. 
Just make yourselves at home. Now, I've got some things to attend to around the plantation, and if you need anything, just call for one of the bearers. They'll bring lunch to your room if you like. Thanks, Leeds. We'll see you later, then. Hmm. Why so thoughtful, Christ? Hmm? Oh. You look as if something's bothering you. What is it? I don't know exactly, but... Well, somehow I get the feeling that all is not ship-shaped in Siam. What do you mean by that? This elephant deal. It was all too easy. I got a hunch there's a hooker in it, but I'll be darned if I can figure out what it is. <laughs> Clark, your imagination's working overtime. The man had an elephant for sale and we bought it. What could be simpler? Yeah, that's just what I mean. It was too simple. <laughs> you always start imagining things when you get up too early. Come along. Let's go to our room and take a nice nap, dear. I'm sure when you wake up, everything will be fine. Your father leads up. Oh, oh, Omid, must you sneak up that way? Why are you back here? I started for village sub, but I changed mine. Oh, you did, did you? I not like going without Tokru, Sub. You fool. You and that crazy elephant. Sub, it is not true what other Mahouts are whispering, is it, Sub? What are they whispering? Speak up. They are saying that strange white man took a Tokru this morning. They say, you saw Tokru. Well, what if I am? But, Sub, they will take her away. They will not treat her well. She will cause big trouble, Sub. That's not my worry on it. No yours either. These people, they not know this about Tokru, Sub. What they don't know won't hurt them. Ahmet will tell them. They must know. You won't tell them anything, Ahmet. But I must, Sub. It is my duty. Oh, I've sold that elephant. Now, leave things alone. They will not take Tokru when they know. You'd spoil everything for me, wouldn't you? I guess there's only one way to settle this. Sub, no. You've asked for it, Ahmet. If you'd gone into the village like I told you. Sub... You will put down knife. Not come closer. No, Sub, no. Let, let go my wrist, you. The cold steel is not to your liking, Sub. Oh, man. You would beg for mercy, Sub. Uh, Allah, forgive me. Now I shall be hunted for the rest of my days. But they will not find me. I'd wake up. Uh, hmm? oh, oh, what is it, Harry? I think Mr. Sutherland just came in the house. Uh, I saw a car stop and a man head for the door anyway. Hmm. What time is it? 4.30. Hey, that was some nap I had. Uh, where's my comb? Oh, here it is, dear. Okay. All right, let's go see if that was Sutherland. Hello there. Are you the Beatties? That's right. You must be Mr. Sutherland. Uh, this is my wife. Oh, how Very do you do? Very glad to know you, indeed. I came back earlier than I anticipated after seeing Davis in Chiang Mai. He told me about your being here. I see. Uh, where's Leeds, do you know? Well, he was around all morning. I don't know where he went after we settled our business. Business? Don't tell me you bought that white elephant of his. Why, yes, but... That explains why I can't find him then. He skipped. Can't find him, but, but we... Why would he skip, Mr. Sutherland? So you wouldn't find out the truth about that animal until it's too late. I still don't understand. Well, let me explain. You've brought a rogue elephant, practically wild. Nobody can handle her except Amit, her Mahout. Well, surely another Mahout could be We've trained. We've tried them all, Beatty, and they're all terrified of Takru. Won't even get close to her. Neither will the other elephants. Hmm, now it's beginning to make sense. Oh, Clyde, and you had a feeling all along something was wrong. Well, what do we do now? That's a good question, but I haven't the answer. I'm afraid you've been taken, Beatty. Maybe we can persuade this Amit to come along. I guess it's worth a try. Hit more! Hit more! You'd still have to get permission from the authorities for Ahmed and Tokru to leave the country. You call, Saab? Yes, bring Ahmed here, Bilma. That cannot be done, Saab. What do you mean? Ahmed run off into jungle like wild man. We not see Ahmed again. Oh, that's just dandy. And here I am with seven tons of walking dynamite. I'm sorry, Clyde. So am I, Beatty. But I'm afraid you've got a white elephant on your hands in more ways than one. <laughs> Oh, 
Clyde and Harriet Beatty purchased a rare white elephant at a teak plantation in Siam, only to discover later that the animal was an unmanageable rogue. The plantation foreman disappeared after the transaction, and the native Mahout who handled Tukru the elephant was seen fleeing into the jungle. Mrs. Beatty, shake hands with the world's biggest chump, your ever-loving husband. Oh, Clyde, don't be too discouraged. I'm sure we'll be able to work this problem out all right. I wish I had your confidence right now. Any suggestions, Sutherland? Well, I'm afraid leads won't be easy to find. From the look of his room, he must have just thrown a few things together and left in a big hurry. But where could he go? He's had several hours start. He probably got into Chiang Mai, possibly hired a car there to take him to Bangkok. And what about Ahmet, the Mahout? I imagine when Ahmet discovered his elephant had been sold, he decided to leave for good. Natives are funny that way. Once they get attached to an animal, they consider it their own personal property. Well, if he'd come back, he could really feel that way. But he's our best bet. If we can locate Ahmet and explain that you didn't know the whole story, perhaps he'll come back and continue to handle the crew. Where would you go to look for him? Chances are he's gone to the village. He's got a family there, I think. You mean in Chiang Mai? Oh, no. There's a small village through the jungle, only three or four miles from here. There's a fairly good trail, and that was the direction Ahmet was seen to take. It's worth a try. Come along, then. We'll get a couple of elephants in my house. I don't fancy walking through the jungle, and it'll be almost dark by the time we're back. Maybe you'd rather wait here, Harry. No, thanks. I'll tag along if you don't mind. Okay. Shall we go, then, Sutherland? Yes. Just one moment while I get a couple of express rifles. One can never tell when they might be needed. In the half-light of dusk, we made our way through the jungle trail and soon arrived at a small native village. Sutherland's Mahout took us straight to a small bamboo basha with thatched roof and dirt floor. And there we found Ahmet's brother. Several other natives gathered around as we tried to find some trace of the missing Mahout. How long ago was he here, boy? He lived one hour, maybe two hours ago, Sob. He was like crazy man. What has Ahmet done? He hasn't done anything that I know of except act like a fool over that elephant. Where did he go, do you know? Ahmet say he's going away. Never come back. What? Ahmed come get things which belong him. He go far away, but cannot leave Tokru. Say he must go back for Tokru. Get Tokru? Surely he wouldn't steal her. Well, Betty, we'd better get back to the plantation as quickly as possible. It looks very much as if Ahmed's coming to us. Let's stop by the house here a moment first. I want to tell my number one boy to be on the lookout for Ahmet. Hey, isn't this your boy coming? Why, yes. He seems awfully excited about something. Sutherland, Saab. I'm glad you returned. What's the matter, Binmar? What is it? It is Leeds, Saab. Leeds? What do you mean? Speak up, boy. Leeds, Saab. He is in house. He's come back. He is dying, Saab. He hurts their back. Good heavens. Come on, Beatty. All right. Well, what happened to him? I don't know. Here. Right through here. Quiet. Easy, honey. He's been stabbed. He's he's still alive, but I don't know what his chances are. Binma, how did this happen? I do not know, sir. I went into the closet of his room and found him. You found him this way in his closet? Yes, sir. This is starting to make sense, Sutherland. I'll bet Ahmet discovered Leeds had sold to crew to me, so he tried to kill Leeds. That account is running off. Well, if that's what happened, he might have done it in self-defense. Well, what makes you think that? Because this knife belongs to Leeds. Maybe he tried to use it on Ahmet first. This is hardly the time to worry about who is responsible. We've got to do something for him. Then, Ma, get me hot water and clean bandages. I'll send someone into Chiang Mai for the doctor right away. In the meantime, I know you'll do what you can for him, Mrs. Beatty. Hadn't we better get on down to the elephant compound, Sutherland? Yes. If the beggar comes back after Takru, we'll be ready for him. Come on. Sutherland. Look, that native running toward the compound. By Gad. It's Ahmet. He's running straight toward Takru. <laughs> It doesn't look like we're going to make it, Sutherland. He slipped the chain off to Crew's leg. Blast the luck. Look, that white rogue acts like she knows what's going on. She's swinging Ahmed up to her back. Ahmed, seen us. He's heading into the jungle on the other side of the compound. Ahmed! Ahmed, come back here, you fool! Oh, too late. He's made it. He won't make it for long. We'll get some elephants in the house and track him down. <laughs> There are his tracks. He's heading for the river. But he can't be far ahead. Keep him moving, Giotto. What happens when he gets to the river? He's apt to give us the slip once he reaches it. We've got to catch sight of him before he gets there. Brother, I never knew elephants could move so fast. That's where we've got the advantage. These elephants can move along the trails faster than the white one. 
She's bigger, but not so fast. She seems to be doing all right at that. We're gaining on her. Don't worry. Looks like a fork in the trail up ahead. There is. The trail going to the left is the one that leads to the river. Hold up, Giotto. Let's have a look here. What's the matter? That's odd. Annette's taking the trail to the right. And where does that lead? Well, that's what's strange. It leads into a clearing and stops. He can't possibly get on through. He must have thought we'd follow the river trail, huh? Exactly. He figured we'd pass by, then he could double back the way we came. Lucky we spotted his tracks here. All right, Giotto. Follow this trail. Here's the clearing just ahead, Betty. I see it. And there's Armiton to crew in the middle of it. He knows he's trapped now. All right, Giotto, stop here. Some of you move around to the either side there. Now, the elephants seem uneasy again. They always are around that white rogue. We'll stay right here and block the trail. Amit, you must return with us to the plantation. Never stop. Everything will be all right if only you'll come back peaceably. Amit knows penalty for killing. But I not wish to kill Leeds up. He made me do this. But you didn't kill Leeds. He's alive. Those are big lies, sir. Amit, what Sutherland says is true. You'll have a fair trial and you'll also have your elephant. Amit will have to prove, but will not return to plantation. It's no use. He doesn't believe us. That poor devil. Amit, this is your last chance. You must come back with us or we'll I have... Have... I have... Drato, hold this elephant still. Drato, I'm slipping off. I'm falling. Get up, Sutherland, move! Ahmed's trying to break through! Thanks, <laughs> Sutherland, are you all right? Yes, thanks to you and your rifle. I hated to shoot the crew, <clears throat> but I had no choice. Another ten feet, and he'd have trampled me. I'm afraid Ahmed may be in bad shape. He took a nasty fall when the crew went down. Let's have a look. All right. Uh, 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 We'd better get him back to the plantation. Right. I don't think he's hurt too badly, though. We'll have the doctor fix him up. Let's go. What's the doctor's verdict, Harriet? He says Ahmed has a slight concussion, but will be all right in a few days. And Leeds is going to pull through, too, he thinks. That's a relief. I'm glad for both of them. I'm glad you were here to help, Mrs. Beatty. You seem to be quite a nurse. Thank you. It seems such a shame all this had to happen, though. I know what you mean. I wish I'd never heard of that white elephant in the first place. If I'd had any idea... Now, you can't blame yourself for what's happened. (laughs) What's so amusing, Clyde? I was just thinking, how many people in the world can hope to equal my accomplishment? What do you mean, Beatty? Why, for six whole hours, I was the worried, if not proud, owner of a white elephant. No other wild animal trainer can make that statement. (laughs) (laughs) Clyde will return in just a moment to tell us about his next exciting adventure. But first... And now, here is Clyde Beatty again with a few words about our next story. That great old showman, P.T. Barnum, had a way of fooling his customers and making them love it. We all remember his motto, there's one born every minute. So he'd probably have given a right arm for a sideshow attraction like the wild man from Borneo that was tossed into my lap. But as for me, well, I'd have given a right arm to get rid of the wild man. It's an amazing yarn that I think you'll enjoy. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. The White Rogue of Siam was written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tossing. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs> 